Hey guys, behind me you see our greenhouse number two that we just finished building. In today's video, I wanted to show you the progress of our Farmer's Friend Gothic Tunnel that we built. We are not sponsored by Farmer's Friend. However, Farmer's Friend, if you want to send me another greenhouse, I would love to. Technically, it's a cold frame because it's not heated, but I wanted to go through this video. It's not a tutorial or how to build it, but just our experience with building it. And then I just wanted to show you the inside in case you guys are interested in using this for growing plants or as a nursery or anything like that. I can show you how we use it and see if this is helpful for you guys. So first we got the pallet in. We had this freight truck that came in. We had loaded the pallet and it came beautifully packaged. Everything was really clearly organized. I have built one already. This is our second one. So I was pretty familiarized with the whole process. And I did have an awesome neighbor come. Actually, I've had a lot of people come to help me with this greenhouse build. And I'll talk about them kind of in the order as we built it. So our awesome neighbor and friend, Will, came and help me. Thank you so much, Will, for helping us um, put together this greenhouse. We worked for about four, maybe five hours and put the arches together. So the first day, I just essentially measured 14 feet wide and 50 feet long. I figured out my rectangle, made sure it was all square. And then every five feet, I put in the rebar stakes. I did have to pound those in. A uh, hammer worked okay, but it was a lot of work. If you have a sledgehammer or just something a little heavier, it will work pretty well. Our clay soil is clay soil, but it was wet. So it actually wasn't too terrible to get in. You have to pound them down and leave about 12 to 15 inches of rebar above the ground. You're doing so good. You're doing so good. Hi. Hi, sweetheart. Hi. Hi, baby. So we did that and then we went to assemble all of the arches. There are 11 arches for this greenhouse and they have the peak. We chose the Gothic style tunnels because it is nice for us to put the irrigation line down. Eventually we might do hanging baskets, who knows. It's just nice to have that extra headspace. We did also opt to get the lift kit, which essentially just lifts the whole sides up to make the greenhouse taller. So then after Will helped me build each arch, essentially we screwed them all together with the tech screws provided by Farmer's Friend. We put them all together. That was kind of satisfying because you get to see the build and it just kind of comes up and it looks like you did something pretty quickly. That wasn't too terribly hard. The next step was, I can't remember what the next step was, but I think we put together this wind bracing up here. I don't know if you guys see that wind bracing up there. We did learn this greenhouse we bought recently, the first greenhouse we bought years ago, they did extend the length of these. So I made a mistake in switching out this size with the wind bracing that goes diagonally. So if you do buy it recently, just know that this size right here is a lot longer than this size now. It used to be where they were the same and they were interchangeable, which is nice. You know, it just provides extra strength to it, but also you can hang stuff from it, like maybe hanging baskets if you want. But then we put this diagonal bracing on each of the corners and that helps a lot with wind, just making it a little more sturdy. And I'm pretty sure that was pretty much it for day one. We got a ton done, it was a lot of work. As we were building this greenhouse, Holly's dad was gracious enough to help us with building the doors for the greenhouse. So you can tell this the front isn't fully finished yet. Let me go ahead, I'll show you a sneak peek of the inside and the plants. But right now, all we did was, I'm kind of moving forward to show you again the whole process of putting the plastic in, but I wanted to show you the doors because he ended up putting these in before we went ahead and put the plastic. That way we wouldn't have to undo some steps and then go forward. So anyway, what we ended up doing was using four by four posts here. So he went ahead and put those in on either side. And then we did get from Farmer's Friend. So we did end up getting these braces from Farmer's Friend to attach the top of these four by four posts right here and Holly's dad did all of this work. Um, this came with the kit, these little hooks right here and then these braces to be able to put these four by fours in and he did uh, put them in the ground. And then we do have a board that goes this way. And again, he has a four by four going across as a header. And then there's a four by four post, same thing. Those brackets are holding that up. We did ask him and he was great at building these. Huge because we wanted this opening for the greenhouse to be just available in case we needed to get in, carts in. You never know what you need to get inside the greenhouse in order to work on it. And we didn't want to neck this down to just a small door or anything like that. We wanted to leave our options available. So he ended up building 
The doors themselves, they are one by four boards. They are treated. And then they have the X pattern and whatnot. And he ended up making these really nice. He loves to weld and he's an amazing welder. So he made these latches here and just kind of made all that custom. If you're looking to make something like this yourself, uh, you can pretty easily with one by fours, just make a frame, make an X. And then, you know, if you can find something either on Amazon or Lowe's or somewhere, anything, you know, if you don't have access to somebody that knows how to weld or anything like that, you can definitely find some hardware on hand. And then he did rip some strips here on the other side just to be able to hold down the same plastic that came with the greenhouse. So now what we need to finish up is essentially uh, getting this plastic on the outside just cut and then just screwed in but he was waiting on me to get the plastic on the greenhouse so that then we can go ahead and finish this up and the reason is because I wanted to kind of now backtrack the reason is because to get it to this point after day one we got most of the structure day two we had to finalize some details of you know getting the wind bracing in and then we ended up putting up the plastic. I unfortunately didn't get any footage of that because we were just go, go, go. But I had our other awesome neighbor help me that day and also a really dear friend, uh, Patience. So Nick and Patience, thank you so much for helping us. And Holly's dad. This has been a team and a community effort to get this thing up. So it's been awesome to have all that help because otherwise I don't know how we would get it all done and I don't know how we would be able to fit all the plants that we're growing this year. Even the second greenhouse, it's going to be tight. But you can see here we got all the plastic up. It does end up being pretty much exactly what you need on either side in terms of the length. They do give you extra plastic just so you have options. So I did cut the plastic about 10 feet extra on either side just to give myself options. Once we got the plastic down, we then put this wiggle wire down and that's what holds it on either side. I did skip a step this channel right here where the wiggle wire goes into you do need to screw it in i didn't get any footage of that either this wasn't on here but i did screw this channel in came with the kit i put the me and nick put the wiggle wire in that was easy but also a bit of a chore <laughs> then you pull the plastic down completely tight all the way at the end and then you put the wiggle wire down at the other side that's what holds this plastic down and then you can see this rope here so this took me a little bit. Nick and I were working on this to get this rope tied here and then every other bow, you end up just tossing it back and forth, tying it down. That's kind of why you see this greenhouse on the side. You can kind of see that plastic sinking in but in between every bow. It holds that plastic from kind of blowing out so that when you put plants or whatever you're putting on the inside, you know, the plastic just stays tight and that was the completion mostly of the greenhouse essentially now the next steps that we have to complete are just finishing the front to complete the doors and we're pretty much done let me show you the inside now a little bit so you guys can see that and now you kind of saw a little bit of a sneak peek but we got lots of our annual plants right here i did forget to mention patience was helping us while we were building the greenhouse with the greenhouse but also she was amazing she put down all this landscape fabric down herself as we were doing this and we are going to put another row of or another run of landscape fabric here in the middle because it is kind of splitting a little bit um, because we have a row here of compost that we did a no dig garden before um, and we actually left it here because we might peel it back and plant stuff later in the season when we're not using this for production we'll figure that out but we are going to put another row of landscape fabric down in the middle that way it's not splitting and that dirt isn't coming up. But it's looking amazing. It just, it's so fun to have something like this already. This is gonna be packed out with plants in no time. You can see we're just loaded with Proven Winners annuals. So check out in a, another video at some point, we'll do a tour of the greenhouses so that you can see where they're at. But I did wanna show you here to take a second to show you the sprinkler system that we installed so nick helped me install this sprinkler system and essentially it is three quarter inch poly tubing so just like you would use for a drip and then these are netafim sprinklers so you can buy this kit from farmer's friend they pretty much have everything you need um, and you just buy it i decided to go and just buy the parts myself i also since we own the business our nursery, I have wholesale accounts with local drip irrigation companies. So I was able to get this at a better cost building it myself. 
because I can get all these supplies wholesale. So right here you can see I have these, they're called um, overhead assemblies, and these are 24 inches long. They come in whatever size you want. I decided, because the other greenhouse has 24 inches long ones, I decided to do that. You could see this one here. We accidentally made an oops, and I told Nick, let's do these every, I believe it was every two feet. And then he was like, hey, we're running out of sprinklers. <laughs> and then I realized, oh crap, it's not every two feet. Um, so anyway, we decided to do every, you know, the length of two of these. That's what we ended up doing. These have a wide covering. So at the end of the day, I messed up. So I have to get some goof plugs to plug up these holes here. And then we'll be able to use the system automatically. But the overhead assemblies are just that tubing with the weight. And then you decide what sprinklers you want to get. So I got these from Netafem up here. And then these are SpinNet brand. And those are the red, white, and blue. Um, very patriotic sprinklers. But those are the red, white, and blue sprinklers. They have a certain amount they put out and so on and so forth. I didn't get into too much detail. I just know that those work. I know that that's what Farmer's Friend recommends and they use. So that's all. I needed to know in order to just go ahead and complete this and I just poked them in uh, about they're about three feet eight inches right now something like that so I have about 11 sprinklers my other greenhouse has 13 so somewhere along the lines I mismeasured but they're still once I get this up and running it should still be even coverage if not I have so much space I can just pop in a few here and there again it doesn't need to be perfect as long as the plants get watered and I do have a timer that that is attached to. So I can show you here at the end what I did and at the beginning, just in case you're interested in doing overhead irrigation for your own greenhouse. So right here, that's a power lock fitting and it essentially just screws in at the end and it's a flush valve. So you can just screw it and it keeps all the water in or you can unscrew it and flush out water. If you ever have any dirt in your water, in your well, you can flush that out. They do recommend to take the sprinklers off so you don't clog them up. And before you install this, it's good to flush anything out in case you have dirt. And then I have an elbow coupling right here. That is the same power lock. So they're the screw ones where you just push in the tubing and then you screw it in. And right here you can see the zip ties. So we essentially just zip tied the whole situation. And then we have this right here. So these are our main hoses. This goes to greenhouse one, greenhouse two, and this is our hose with our fertilizer that we use. We don't fertilize everything, but some things we do, and we have the option to be able to do like a fertigation system, depending on what plants need what fertilizer. And then at the well, we have a timer that we use, that we have an app on our phone, that we can actually time it and figure out how much water output and so on and so forth. So we're able to get both of these greenhouses automated, which is great because we don't want to have to get up early, hand water these when it gets so hot. I try to get the water in the morning so that these plants have water that they can sustain the heat. It has been a significantly hot spring for us. So anyway, that's pretty much greenhouse number two that we've built. Maybe once it's completed and the doors are completed or the doors on both of them, because Holly's dad is going to be helping us to get the doors on both of these greenhouses. Maybe once we can do that, then I can show you them more completed. So I think in the next couple videos, I might show you the tour of the inside of the greenhouses. So stay tuned for those. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that was helpful and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.